Good evening. My name is Ricky, Minister Ricky Morris. And I'm Nanda Morris. And together we are Eliaship Ministries. Uh, we want to give you some understanding of what the word Eliaship means. Uh, uh, it, it means that God will restore. Uh, the Almighty God that created the heavens and the earth uh, has a desire in his heart to restore mankind from his fallen position that sin put us in and to put us back into the original intent and purpose that God created mankind for which is to give him glory and honor in the earth. So we want to let you know that God's intent is to rescue us, is to recover us, and to put us back and to retrieve us from the hand of the enemy and put us back into our original condition and state. So with this in mind, beloved, God called us, Ricky and Nanda Morris together, to come and to impart into your life through the preaching of the gospel, the truth of his word, what his plan was for us from the beginning of time to restore us back into fellowship, into relationship with him, to a position of power and authority, which we had from the beginning. But when mankind fell, we lost that. But Jesus came and restored it to us, but we must receive it. So we impart unto you the peace, the prosperity, the purpose, and the plan of God huh, through the preaching of the gospel that you can become all that God has called you to be huh, in Jesus name. So beloved, we want you to sit back tonight, relax, get your pen, get your paper, call a friend and tell them that it's time for restoration. Greetings, beloved, and welcome to Time for Restoration. The studio audience and I want to welcome you to this broadcast. We'll be doing live broadcasts monthly. So if you want to join us here at the Bright Spot, feel welcome to do so. All you need to do is call the number on the screen and ask for more information regarding the broadcast. Well, it's good to be back again with you in your homes, huh? with you and your family. The studio audience and I just want to take this time to let you know that it's all about God. Huh? Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's Let's give Jesus some praise. He's worthy today. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of dominion and power and might. And we come here for no other reason but to give him glory, but to give him honor and to give him praise. So we thank God for this opportunity that we have to come and to speak to you today. We want to continue on in the teaching that we've been doing. We've been talking uh, in the book of Ephesians. Now the book of Ephesians, we just want to recap a little bit and go back over the last couple of weeks. The book of Ephesians is called the book of the Queen of Apostles because it sums up a large measure of the subjects that Paul has been teaching about and writing about in the books of his Gospels. In the book of Ephesians, Paul writes to the saints and he explains to them who they are in Christ. He also tells them about the new society that they've entered into. In this society, they've been birthed into the kingdom. So they've been birthed into the kingdom by the Holy Ghost. It's not anything that they did on their own. So when we come into focusing where we are in the text today in chapter 2, this is where we've been doing all of our main teachings in the last few series. We found out that we were first made alive for him in verse 1. It tells us that. So for in the times to come that God could show off through us his power, demonstrating his kindness and the richness of his grace through us in Christ Jesus. In verse 6, we also see that we were, well, verse 8, excuse me, we were also see that we were, um, um, saved by grace through faith. Now, understand this, beloved. When we did the teaching, we talked about what this meant. Grace through faith. The grace is the actual conviction of the Holy Ghost on our hearts. We respond to that in faith. That's the response that we make when we accept the salvation of Jesus Christ. So here we are in verse 8. We found out also in that verse that Jesus died for our debt, but he rose again for our righteousness. So here we are in our text today. Our text, we're coming from Ephesians chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there, and the verse is 10. And it reads, For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Come on, let's pray and get right into the lesson. Father, we just thank you for your word. Huh? Now we ask, oh God, huh, that you would give us ears to hear, huh? eyes to see, hearts to obey and receive. Huh? What you, Holy Ghost, are saying to your church. Huh? God, cause me to decrease, huh? that you can increase, that you can move huh? with power, oh God, huh? with your anointing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you huh? for what you're getting ready to do, what you're getting ready to say, huh? for souls and lives that are getting ready to be changed. Huh? In Jesus' name we pray. Huh? Amen. 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 In the early 50s and 60s, there was this TV show, and it was called This Is Your Life. In that series, if you remember, anybody old enough to remember that, in that series, they would find a celebrity that didn't know uh, that they were going to be picked for the show, and they would take them to this spot. And then all of a sudden, they would surprise them and tell them, hey, you're going to be on This Is Your Life. Well, then they would take them into the studio audience, and in the studio, they would take them, and people would begin to come out their friends, their family, all the people that they've loved, and they begin to tell stories about them. And so at the end of the show, they would all those same people would come out and they would bring gifts to the person. Well, it's going to happen, something similar is going to happen for us. When it's all over, we're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before God and we're going to have to give an account. He's going to show a big movie. A big screen is going to appear and there's going to be a story. And it's going to be our life. And in our life, we're going to give an account to God for every word, every thought, every deed that we did in this body. So, beloved, it behooves us to make sure that we're doing the right things in this body. Well, today we want to talk about this lesson. We want to talk about what the scripture says. So, in preparing Preparing for this, God says, tell the people about making a movie or a show. He said, because in doing this, it's going to help them understand what I'm trying to tell them. So let's look at this, beloved. Let's look at this. What is a producer? What is a person that produces a TV show? A person that produces the TV show is a person that takes a thought, they take a dream, they take, um, they take a vision they've had, and they make it become a reality. This is what happened in this show, the time, This Is Your Life. The producer took someone's thought and they made it become a reality. But unlike the show, the text tells us that we are not our own. We've been bought with a price. We are God's workmanship and the product of his producing. So our topic for this tonight, this teaching tonight, is God is the producer and this is not your life. Huh? Can I get a witness up in here? Huh? This is not our life. God huh, is the producer of this product, huh? and this is not our life. Huh? God, how does he do it? How does a person produce a show? How do they take a dream, a thought, or a desire and make it into reality? Well, let me tell you, first thing they have to do is they have to select the script. The script is all the words that all the people are going to say. They select that. Then they select the location for the filming, where it's going to play out. All the actors, they select them. Everybody going to be involved. They select that. Huh? But understand this. Huh? Every person that's in the play got to try out. Huh? You can't let everybody huh, be in your play huh? because they don't fit where they're supposed to be there. Huh? When they're not supposed to be there, they're not going to fit in. Huh? Then the producer selects the camera crew, the lighting. He selects every person and everything to ensure that it's going to go as, as forward as it's supposed to. Everything's supposed to happen just as planned. It's just like God for us in our lives. He picked a script. Yeah. Here it is right here. Huh? God's word is our script. In it we find there are pre-selected words for healing, huh? pre-selected words for deliverance, pre-selected words huh? for prosperity, pre-selected words for peace, huh? pre-selected words for hope, huh? and pre-selected words even for our salvation. Huh? God in, in Romans 8, 9, and 10, huh? he pre-selected those words huh? that we would say huh? out of our own mouths huh? and believe in our own hearts huh? that we would receive Jesus. Huh? He pre-selected those words for us. Huh? God selected where we were going to be born, huh? just like the producer has to select huh? where the play going to take place at. Huh? God selected where we was going to be born. Huh? He selected our parents. Huh? He selected the job you're going to work at. Huh? And some of you, he even selected your spouse. Huh? Yeah. Oh, some of you selected your own. Huh? That's why you're having trouble right now. Huh? Right, God selected right. even the date huh? and the time huh? and the place huh? where you're going to die. Huh? Why is it important huh? that we understand 
the time and the place where we're going to die at. I understand this, beloved, because God is the producer. And every time, every production has a timeline. Every production got a timeline. They got so much time that they got to have this thing wrapped up, done, and ready for the studio audience to see. Ecclesiastes tells us, under the sun there's a time for everything. So what would make our lives think our lives were any different? There is a time and a season for all things. Beloved God, he's the producer. He is the producer, huh? and this is not your life. Huh? Uh, let's look at the text. Let's look at it a little deeper. Huh? It says in the chapter, in verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship. Huh? That's present tense. That means right now, huh? right now, if you have received Jesus Christ huh, as your Lord and Savior, huh, you are the product of his yeah. producing. So what is it that God is making us into? Huh? What is it that he's shaping us and forming us and fashioning us into? Huh? In Romans 8 and 29, it tells us. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he did predestine or preplan us to be conformed huh, into the image of his son, Jesus. The word conform means to be jointly, huh, jointly formed or fashioned together to make you look like that person. Huh? So God is creating us huh, and forming us where? Huh? In Christ. Huh? You see, none of this can take place. Huh? Oh, God, help me. Huh? None of this can take place tonight huh, without Jesus. Huh? If you're trying to do it on your own, huh, you're not going to make it. Huh? you got to be produced huh, only in God. Huh? It's all in Christ Jesus. Huh? But we got to understand huh, that God God created us in the beginning. In Genesis, he said that he created us to be fashioned just like him after his likeness in his spirit so that we would walk like him, talk like him, love like him, move like him in the earth, heal like him, deliver like him, set people free just like him. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he gave me this analogy. Huh? This analogy was interesting. Huh? He said, it's like French toast, Nanda. I love French toast. Y'all like French toast? Yeah. I love French toast. I don't make it too often because, you know, it's not good for the hips. But <laughs> I love French toast. And he said, you have four real main ingredients in French toast. You got bread. You got milk. You got eggs. And you got some seasoning, right? That's the four main ingredients. He said, well, you the bread. You the slice of bread. He said, God, he said, I'm the father, I'm the milk, I'm the one that stabilizes everything. He said, then Jesus is the eggs. You see, because Jesus was broken to put us all back yeah. together again. Yeah. He said, then the seasoning is the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost had life. If you don't put no seasoning in that French toast, it ain't going to taste like nothing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, Jesus, Jesus said in his word, huh, he said that if we love the father, that they would come and make their abode with us. Who is they? Huh? The father, huh, the son, and the Holy Ghost, huh, because they're one. So that French, that bread gets dipped in that batter and that stuff, and it soaks up all those things. But what's missing to make it French toast? Heat. It got to have some heat. Yeah. It got to have some heat. You got to put that raw bread on the fire. Yeah. If you don't put no fire on it, you're not going to have no toast. You're going to have a soggy mess. Yeah. And a lot of us are trying to do it without being put on the fire. We got to have the fire of God to process yeah. us, to sanctify us, to purify us. Otherwise, we are thieves and robbers and we are not going to get in the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why does God do all of this? Why does he do it? First of all, he does it because he loves us so much. We're his creation. But then he does it because of what the text says. The text says, 
so that we could do the good works that God had pre-planned for us to do before the foundation of the earth. Huh? God already set up things that we are supposed to do. Huh? Everywhere we go, God should be being taught. If we're in Christ, huh, everywhere we go, there should be a demonstration of God. Huh? There should be healing on your job. Huh? There should be deliverance in the car lot. Huh? There should be somebody getting set free at the wash house, huh? at the laundromat, at the grocery store. Huh? God should be being seen through us. Huh? Look what it says in Mark. Huh? We're not going to turn there. It says in Mark the 16th chapter 15 through 20 it says that these signs are going to follow believers. We should be looking like the producer. We should be looking like being shaped, being fashioned, conformed.